but green theories were added to the mix. They all described the same new thing. Quantum mechanics. You see, physics had the problems they couldn't seem to fix using the old classical laws of Newtonian dynamics. They said these double slits are playing tricks, we can't believe what we see. Imagine for a while you're playing soccer with me, except in the field there's a wall that's only got two gaps. So every time you kick the ball, and it goes through the wall, I trap it and map it. And so in time, you're gonna get two lines from where all the balls went through the wall. Now if you take the wall, but instead of kicking balls, you send some waves of water through those gaps, you will see, classically, waves of water interfere with each other when they're near. They will add or subtract, it depends where they're at. So your pattern on the wall is not like the soccer balls at all. Let's shrink it down, 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 down. Now our gaps are slits. We shine some light and see it. It's got a pattern like waves. Well, we're not amazed. We had a sneaky suspicion, an intuition. That was how it would be. Because light is just little waves, right? Now let's try it with electrons. We'd expect to see two lines like we saw with soccer balls. We think we must, since electrons are just little particles, right? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. What a shocking sight. Electrons make a pattern that is just like light. Now wait a minute, does that mean they're like water we have seen? This sounds easy to explain. Just like rain looks like drops to your eye when it drops from the sky from a high, and you don't ask why, then that rain in the main of the ocean acts like waves and electrons just the same? But they're not. If we plot those electrons dot by dot while we shot one per minute, then we see the pattern in it would be just the same. Each electron interferes with itself, even with no other electrons near. Let's rewind a minute now. You know how I said how we weren't amazed that light's pattern looks like waves? Sometimes it's a problem though. When you know the photoelectric effect, you'd expect the light of any frequency would make the electricity, depending how bright is the light that you shine on a metal the right time. Light would not go up and produce the electricity. What you see surprisingly, it doesn't depend on light intensity. No matter how bright is the light, the effect depends on frequency. This is just how to say in dismay, there's only a single way to explain that ray. Light must be made of photons. Individual particles. If the frequency is low, no amount of photons will produce that glow. Each photon has a need for sufficient energy to push one electron from the metal you see. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now hold on just a minute. We said light was waves, that's the way it behaves. And now it's particles? Quantum can be confusing sometimes, but it's not really that hard to Close to these lines, you'll see your 
probability that's spread out over all. And when you try to see it, it curls up in a ball. But as long as you don't try to measure it, you won't collapse the wave function. The Schrodinger equation will predict the wave function with zero uncertainty continuously and deterministically. So what happens then in the chain of events between electrons being sent through a measuring device and when data reach your eyes? Does the wave function collapse when devices make maps, or does it happen perhaps when you see the data with your own two eyes? What if you make a measurement with a device, but you store it in a drawer for a year or more? Did the wave function collapse, or is the measurement perhaps still only probability until you see it consciously? Physicists have fun thinking through this one. They've barely begun solving this problem. Positivism, in the view of some, says you shouldn't try understanding why. All you need to do from this point of view is measure how it looks to you. You don't need to say it's true. But most people care in the view they share. The Copenhagen interpretation says the act of measuring is what is determining. Some people go further though. They say it's what humans know. So if you throw poor Schrodinger's cat in a box, there's no certainty that he is dead or alive until you look inside. But some people contrive to theory way more wide that says every possibility is somewhere a reality. There's a multiplicity of worlds created separately. Every time you think you see the wave function collapse, really more universes seem to be existing simultaneously. Does all this sound impractical? One theory is more believable. Bomb said each electron has only one definite path, plus a weight that goes ahead, telling it which way to head. Sadly, this theory has less cred than the other ones have said. One last thing and then I'm done. If you knew two particles spun in opposing directions and you measured either one after both had begun speeding quickly away from each other, would you know the spin of one was the opposite of the other? It would have to tell its brother which way to spin from a distance. Communication must be instant unless spin was determined previously, but we know that cannot be, so distance must be not an issue and we see what's called non-locality. Quantum can be confusing sometimes, but it's not really that hard to get. If you're just listening close to these vines, you'll see your world already set. Quantum, how do we know that it's true? There is no way we can prove. But look what it gave us, transistors and computers, and lasers and radios too. And modern technology, superconductors, semiconductors, transistors, radios, computers, cell phones, lasers, CD players, DVD players, grocery store scanners, eye surgery, MRIs, energy harvesters, ultra-precise clocks, quantum cryptography, randomness generators, and the possibility of communication.